So I'm Paul Hamby from Hamby Dairy Supply, and we're going to go through a 56200 uh, washer assembly for washing milker hose and claw assemblies, such as this cow claw assembly, and here's a, a sheep or miniature goat claw assembly. So let's see what's in the box. First thing you'll notice is that this assembly comes with an extra vacuum hose. So here's the vacuum hose. And this is so that you can alternate vacuum hoses when you milk and wash one one time and use the other one for cleaning. And because the vacuum hose is typically smaller, we have an adapter so that it will hook to the washer. And so the first thing I'm going to do is put that together, adapter for the washer. Then we have a variety of plugs because there's six hose ports on this unit and you may use one to six. The rest of the parts are the washer assembly itself and then we have a drain hose that's going to connect to the bottom. It connects right here after we've mounted it on the wall. Also, there's a set of a spare parts kit. You need to keep this for reordering spare parts in the future. Okay, here's what comes in the package. We have a spare parts list and a diagram of how it goes together in case you need to work on it in the future. And then uh, hardware that includes two mounting screws, though so we're going to use a different kind of a lag bolt here that's shorter. And then it has two, uh, we call parachute closures, which are the same device, same use as this. So this uh, nipple closure goes right on top of there. To to cover the ports that you're not using. Okay, we're going to mount this on the wall. We have pre-drilled holes here. We're going to use these larger leg bolts and mount it right there. And now we're going to attach the drain hose, which goes right here. And in a cold environment, you can add, uh, put this hose in straight hot water for about two minutes and it'll soften the hose so it slides right on. Twist a little and it'll go right up in there. And we're going to put the sink underneath this. All right, next we're going to put the small sink on. And this is the drain hose for the small sink. It goes on the bottom here. This would be a good time to put the hose in hot water. They will go on. Now we're going to put the little sink on the end of the big sink. It just sets right on there. It's just right. Okay, so the, the drain hose from the washer here just hangs inside the little sink like that. Now we're going to attach some milking units. This is the Top Flow Z goat milking assembly. Very popular today. That's what we're going here. And we're going to attach the large 5 8 milk hose to one of the ports on the washer. Now we have and now we have a sheet milking assembly for Minter Pulse that we'll put on. This one has plastic hose, which again, if it's hard to get on, you can put it in hot water to soften it a little bit. Put that on. They don't have to go on very far because vacuum is going to hold it on. And now we have a milking unit that comes on the 1501 Hamby Dairy Supply milker. So this is a cow milker. We're showing three different kinds to demonstrate that the washer will wash a cow, goat, or sheep milking assembly. And now we're going to wash the vacuum hose. So if you use your vacuum hose every day without washing it, it will get a buildup from the foam and wet uh, air going through it and start to get moldy or yucky inside. So you can wash the vacuum hose every day by rotating it with your regular vacuum hose. So we have the adapter on the end. It'll make it slide on easy. Like that. Put your vacuum hose down into the sink. And you're good to go. Okay. Yeah. 
Now we've used four ports, so we have two left blank that we'll cover with these caps. Okay, so now we're going to attach the vacuum to the uh, vacuum system. The top screw is an assembly screw, and it also is where you put your vacuum on. So you put a half inch hose on here. We're using silicone because it's easier to get on, stays flexible at all temperatures. And then it attaches to your vacuum source where the stopcock is right here. So that's how we're going to get vacuum to the unit. If you have a portable pump, then you can use a longer hose and just run your, your hose down to your portable vacuum pump. Works just fine. In this setup, we have a remote vacuum pump. It's in another room. So we have PVC pipe that goes up and over to the vacuum pump. And we have a drain at the bottom so that any moisture can, can drain away. And then a stallcock to provide vacuum over to the bucket washer. So we'll turn the pump on. And then this provides vacuum to the washer. And now we'll add some water. Alright, for, for the cow milker, which would be the same milker that's used on our 1501 milker, there's a shut off right here. And you want to lock this open, so you push it all the way in on the cow. That would be that position, but you push it down and you turn it and it locks open. So that makes it, allows it to wash. So we're going to uh, lock the lock that open so it can draw moisture, throw water. On the sheet milker, which is an ITP 205, there is a milk wash valve right here, and we're going to push this down, push the lever down, which holds the valve inside open so that it can pull the wash solution through. So on both units, we're going to push it down, down as if it were hanging on the udder, and that allows it to draw water. And then on the, our uh, GEA Top Flow Z milkers, they have a valve that is this green cage. And so for to lock this open, this is how you turn it on and off for milking. So we pull it up, up, pull it over, it locks in, and that opens the valve. There's also a vacuum pulsator running uh, that's built into the system. And so that's an LO2 pulsator that is the pulsator sound. Okay, now we'll turn the valve on. The valve is called a stallcock, provides vacuum to the washer. We're going to do some rearranging to get these so that they're down in the water. And now you can see a draw the water up. And once that gets up, then it releases and lets the water drain back down in the sink. And this just goes back and forth. For the first milky rinse, we want this to run for about 30 seconds to a minute is all you need to get rid of that first milky rinse. And then we're going to turn off the vacuum. You can leave your pump run. And now we're just going to uh, take the hose off and let the water drain away to get rid of that first milky rinse. For step two, we're going to add a uh, detergent, a powder detergent. And we want the water to be 140 to 160 degrees. And then we're going to turn it on and run it for about five minutes. The key to step two is that you have enough circulation time, five minutes minimum, and that the water temperature stays above 120 degrees. If it drops below 120 degrees, then the butter fat and, and other solids are going to start to stick back onto the surfaces of the hose and the milker unit. So five minute wash minimum, maximum about seven and a half minutes, and 120 degrees minimum temperature, start temperature 140 to 160 degrees. Okay, so we're going to turn it back on for the wash cycle. <laughs>
Okay, so after our wash cycle is complete, we're going to drain all that water away and do a final rinse. And the final rinse can be cold water or warm, either one's fine. And it can be clear water or you can add some acid if you have really hard water in your barn. So the final rinse needs to be about 30 seconds. And we're going to do the same thing, just run a 30 seconds rinse. The lard sink is for washing your bucket. You still have to wash your bucket by hand. So this sink needs to be big enough to get your bucket in it. That's just a three gallon bucket. So typical goat milker has a six gallon. A typical cow milker has a seven gallon. So the sink has to be big enough for your bucket to get in, but also your brush in hand to get down in there and actually wash the thing. So that's why we use this large of a sink. This is, this is a 1070 day 603 um, sink and we typically send out either this one or a 604 sink. So that's, that's why we have the big sink. You also have to wash the lid of your bucket. Your vacuum hose can hang on this hanger. We have a hanger just for hoses. It'll hold two hoses and that'll hold um, uh, an eight-foot vacuum hose so it can drip dry. We want, when we're all done, we want everything to hang so it will drip dry and no water stands anywhere. And this is designed, and the buckets are designed, so that no water will stand inside and it will all drip dry. And that means there's less water spots and you don't have any bacteria growing in between milkings. So we should talk for just a minute about why it's so important to wash if you have any residues left from milk, in between milkings, you may have bacteria growing in there and you're going to have contaminated milk. So to have clean, sanitary milk, you need a good uh, milking system, a good wash system. And that's why this claw washer can clean all the hard to get to places like inside the hose and down inside the pores of the milkers that you can't easily get to with a brush. It does a much better job than hand cleaning. The two products we use during the wash cycle are Duo Fan a non-foaming alkaline dairy detergent. This is what's used in the five minute wash cycle. It, Dill Fan is specifically made to clean milking equipment. Um, it is, uh, must be used in hot water and it's very concentrated. So this five gallon powder bucket will last a long time, last you for several months. The, so that's during the five minute wash cycle. During the final rinse, then we recommend Citrofoss Acid and Citrofoss is um, an, uh, an acid-based detergent that has uh, five different acids in it and it, it dissolves the hard water minerals of calcium and magnesium and also the calcium left from milk. So that's what makes everything really shine. And the Citrofoss and all acid products have to ship on a pallet because they have a corrosive label. So we recommend you order some bulk and order with friends. We stock both of these and they work really well with this washer and our pipeline washers. Also, if you have more questions, we have a dairy goat catalog. We'd be glad to send you. And a cow, family cow catalog, we would be glad to send to you. And you can call us at 800-306-8937 or visit our website at hambydairysupply.com. Thank you.